So the end, we've come to the end of it. We can create an LFS release file, which is handy if you maybe take an image of this system and you're not sure what version is on there. By creating this file, you can just view it and it tells you this is a Linux from scratch version 11.3 installation. And we can do the same here with these files. These um, respect the Linux standards base. And another one here, which desktop environments will use. If you go on to, to build Linux from scratch, there are tools that will read these files. So it's worth creating them. The only thing you've got to do is to put your code name in here. So for example, I'll put kernel text in there. Oops, I will do if I press the right buttons. And likewise, I'll do the same with the OS release one. And you can get counted as a Linux from scratch user by following that link. And finally, all we need to do is to reboot the system. Uh, there are other things that may need to be done, such as installing firmware for hardware. That's a possibility. Uh, these, these configuration files may need to be reviewed. Some of these are covered in the Beyond Linux from Scratch project. For example, this one is. So let's log out of the Chroot environment. Unmount all these mount points that we mounted all the virtual file systems and if multiple partitions are created unmount them so yes they were oops I'm going to unmount the boot and then I should be able to unmount LFS and it won't let me because I'm in that hierarchy so okay well i got it locked here yes i have so let's get rid of that try it again yep that's unmounted and it's repeated it there now reboot the system so let's control d this and before i leave this graphical environment uh, before we reboot it I'll just move on to the last page. There's some information here about additional resources, um, security advisories and so on, hints, mailing lists and so on. And lastly, it's what to do next after LFS. What we've got here is a very basic system. There's no graphical interface or anything. And it gives you some ideas of what you might want to do, create a graphical environment or use it as a server installing wireless um, and it also says how to work from Troot which is certainly the easier method but some uh, some of the programs may fail with testing um, I believe in the BLFS book those points are noted or you can access the new LFS system with SSH but before you do that, you might want to enter the truth and install SSHD and wget to allow you to A, access it remotely and B, download files using wget. Um, and if you want to work from the LFS command line, uh, it recommends installing these from Beyond Linux from scratch. Uh, in one of my BLFS videos, I believe it might be in the last one I did, which is probably a year or two ago now, I do show how you can just boot the plane Linux from scratch operating system, the basic one that we've created now, and actually build LFS from that point. Um, it's quite hard, but it is possible. So you may want to take one of these options to um, start building Beyond Linux from scratch. I'm not really sure if I'm going to be doing Beyond Linux from scratch. It's a, a lot of work. It takes several months of work uh, behind the scenes and probably about a month of recording to do it so it's a great deal of my time taken out so I won't be doing it every year or 
Um, certainly I won't be doing it every release of Linux from scratch. Um, I might possibly do it next time there's a major upgrade to the version of Linux from scratch, but um, it depend, depends on how I feel and also what other work I've got on my plate. So apart from that, there's appendices here, the rest of the book. There's nothing left to be done apart from reboot the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut down the system. And I'll actually take a snapshot first. So call that completed system. I'm going to unmount the um, CD because we don't want it booting from that. Uh, if I can remember how to do it, uh, settings, storage. I want to unmount this. So let's remove it from the drive. Yep, it says empty, so that's OK. Uh, and I'll now start this and hopefully it will boot. Let's move this over here. Now the, the mouse won't actually work. Well, there's the grub menu. We'll wait for it to auto boot, which it should do. Yes, it's booting. And we've got the boot scripts working. Right, the, that seems to take quite a long time. But yes, it's booted. We've got a prompt. Let's now try and log in as root. And yep, there we have a prompt. So as I say, there's no uh, mouse because there's no functionality. The keyboard's been captured as you've seen, so that works. But let's do cat etc LFS release. You can see that the last one of the last things we did. OS release is there. And also the LSB release file. We can type U name minus A to see description about the system itself. Uh, look at the processor. Let's put that through less. So yeah, you can see that that's come up. That's fine. Um, I don't know if LS CPU works. If that's it, oh yes, it does. Again, you can see that information's there. That's all working. Um, IPA to look at the network. That seems to be configured. Let's see if we can ping. Uh, so to the gateway. Right, that looks like that might not be working. Okay, it's this because of the details I've put in. It looks like it may not be configured correctly. Right, that may actually need some change. Oh well, let's try the main network. No, that's not working. So that may need some work then to configure. Um, yeah, I think uh, I can't remember how that works. It always catches me out. There might might be that the network interface needs to be bridged on the uh, settings for the VM. Um, let's see if uh, let's shut that down. See if we can get that to work. Uh, oh no, I know what it might be. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. I always get confused with the, I'm not a network expert, and I always get confused with the network settings uh, in this. So if anybody's got any suggestions as to what this is, I, I'm not really sure. I, I know what I've done in the past is set up the bridge, a bridge network in the, 
uh, VirtualBox to my own network and then just use my own IP addresses. So, um, I know that works and I haven't done this that this time, so it could be why it's not actually working. So yeah, I guess if we do something like that, it's not going to work, is it? So the name resolution. No, it's not. Okay, so that's the only downside, but I think that's more to do with the uh, virtual environment more than anything else. Um, so that will be something that would have to be fixed. Um, I'll tell you what I will do is I'll set up the bridge. Uh, go into settings, network, attach to a bridge adapter. Right, I may need to change that then. No, so, all right, okay. So now let's start that again. So if I edit the uh, sysconfig um, ifconfig and put in some details to do with my network. So one and two one six eight zero dot two 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 for example one and two dot one six eight dot zero dot one. One or two one six eight dot zero dot two five five. Let's mod the modules. Right, so I'll have to restart the network. So that's going to be network restart. So IPA, yeah, so I've got my local, I can't point with this, but I've got my local IP addresses there. So now let's try pinging the gateway. Yeah, that's working now, you see, that, that's why I use the bridge, I can, I can get it to work. And let's try the name server, that's working. So now let's try an address to see if the DNS is working. Yeah, that's working as well. So you can see there's obviously something I don't understand with the virtual box um, as to how it should be configured. Um, but yeah, anyway, it shows that the network adapter does work, the E1000 network adapter does work within virtual box once it's configured correctly, that is. So yeah, that's it. That's uh, Linux from scratch working fully on a virtual machine. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it really informative. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you want to hear about other videos that I do and I'd appreciate a thumbs up if you found it useful. Thanks very much. Goodbye.